So this is all I want to say about transition graphs, and now I want to apply them to something, which in Keo's book is the next chapter. We have tried to split chapters in small bits, so each bit can be done in one hour lecture. We fairly <laughs> almost never succeed, but with the Marco graphs we did. So now, here comes the next thing. Now we know that we can go from here to here to here to here. Now let's do something very humble. Let's just count all possible ways of getting from here to there. That seems simple enough. And it turns out learning how to count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, will actually get us almost, you know, two-thirds of the way into the very fancy theory of zeta functions in dynamical systems and predicting averages and trace formulas and periodic orbit theory, everything else. So let's learn how to count. In the three disk example, we have already done this because that's a very simple, so it was just a problem set on counting all possible ways of bouncing around three disks. So for three disk, there was a number, kn, which said, I can start on one of the three disks. So I have three choices in the beginning. But once I've taken my initial choice, the next step, so the first bounce between two disks, there are only two choices. And in n time steps, there'll be two to the n of them. Now that's very simple. If you have some pruning, so if the disk is kind of halfway between the other disk and not everything is allowed, this will give us an upper bound on how many possible different visitation sequences a bouncing ball could do. And so we know that in general we will have a, an upper bound. So we know that with pruning, so you have some grammar that says certain sequences are not allowed anymore, kn, the number of, will be smaller, or maybe equal, but probably smaller, as three times, let's write this way, e to the n logarithm of two. And we might be also able to find some lower bound. I'll discuss this a little bit. You know, we could say that, okay, in, in one step, I'm not guaranteed that I can have two possibilities, but if I look two steps in time, maybe only one of them is pruned, as I just showed in pruning before. Like, only one is pruned, but two other ones are possible. So I'll have three rather than four possibility steps in time, which is also going to be exponential as it raises to the power, but it'll be smaller than all possibilities. So I might be able to bound this number, and I might be able to look at some constant e to the n h, where h is, you know, some number like logarithm of two. But in any case, if we have a situation that we know both undercounting and overcounting is exponential, grows exponential at the time, then we might be able to get a very good calculation of what the real growth rate is. And uh, the natural thing is to take a logarithm of both sides, take large n, so these constants don't matter, and look at the quantity, which will be called topological entropy, uh, which we define as h, is a limit of n goes to infinity, so what happens at infinite time, and take a logarithm of both sides, uh, all three terms is a logarithm kn, and as you know, it's exponentially bounded. If you divide it by n, this is supposed to be to go to a constant. And this constant is called topological, not in any fancy sense of, you know, topology in algebraic geometry. It's topology which just counts. I can go from here, not from here, so it doesn't give any more refined weight to transition from region to region. It only cares about 
where they're you know, connected by the graph or not. And it's called entropy because if you think of every sequence as a particular, you know, we think of it as a particular walk, particular trajectory. But you can think the space of all possible ways of getting from there is divided in these sequences. And you think of each one of them as a state, one possible way to get from here to there is a one possible state. Uh, then it looks very much like entropy in statistical mechanics, where this number is logarithm of number of configurations, now number of trajectories, divided by uh, the thermodynamic limit size of the system, in which this is one dimensional strings divided by their length, the number of steps over time. So that's what it is called topological entropy. And, you know, unfortunately, both words are confusing. And as we all realize, you know, sooner or later, this entropy tells us something, but it's actually not a very good characterization of dynamics because the way we partition the space might depend on our taste and we might get very different graphs and might get, you know, use different symbols and might get different entropy. So this is really not an invariant characterization. But it's very handy and we'll fix it up following Kolmogorov's in our well, good statistical mechanics people, uh, great mathematicians, especially Kolmogorov.